Hello friends, in this video I'd like to solve the following problem from the Austrian-Polish mathematical competition 1978, problem number one. It is actually the very first problem of the very first edition of this competition, which uh, takes place annually to our days. Many, many, many it was started many many years ago whatever here uh, we wish to find all functions f from the set of positive real numbers into the set of real numbers for which f of x plus y equals f of x squared plus y squared for all positive numbers x and y it's a somewhat unusual functional equation here are my hints first let y be equal z minus x, where x is arbitrary positive number, and of course y must be positive, so z should be strictly greater than x. And essentially, rewrite our equation in terms of x and z, and find the range of this quadratic function, which takes a real number x from 0 to z, and maps it to x squared plus z minus x squared. And now the somehow unusual part. Show that our function is constant. Spoilers, it is constant. The only solution, the set of solutions consists of constant functions. Spoilers. Uh, show that f is constant on larger and larger subsets of a real real numbers which eventually will fill the whole set of real numbers you will see it's it's a nice step and well you may you may start showing that by first choosing z to be square root of 3 over 2 and then z equals 3 over 2 minus epsilon for some small epsilon so give this problem a try and i will see you in just a minute Alright, so as I suggested, let, let y be equal z minus x, where x is positive and z is greater than x. Alright, so our very first functional equation can be rewritten in the following way. f of x plus z minus x equals f of x squared plus z minus x squared, or if you wish, f of z equals f of z equals f of, let's write it, 2x squared minus 2xz plus z squared. All right, now I wish to investigate the range of this function. So consider, let's now consider function which takes, uh, consider maybe four, four fixed, four fixed positive number z, the following function. which takes a real number between 0 and z, real number x, and maps it to 2x squared minus 2xz plus z squared, which is real. All right, what's the range of this function? Well, it can be easily found by rewriting this expression in a different form. I will write z squared as z squared over 2 plus z squared over 2. And now 2 can be factored out. So it's 2x squared minus x times z plus z squared over 4 plus z squared over 2. And that can be rewritten as 2 times x minus z over 2 squared plus z squared over 2. And now we see that it is really a quadratic function. It is a quadratic function uh, which for 0, for if x is 0, we have the value of 
we have a value write it we have a value at zero of z squared am i right yes i am if x is zero we have z squared if x is z similarly we also have z squared z and here in the middle at z over 2 at z over 2 we see that it is actually the minimum of our function which equals z squared over 2 and our function looks somewhat like that so the range the range of our function which takes some number x from this interval and maps it to 2x squared minus 2x z plus z squared is the interval z squared over 2 closed to z squared open open very well and now that means that for for every number in this interval our function f of z equals f of that number so maybe let's call this condition here triangle and let's call this condition established here square so by condition triangle and by condition square for every positive number z and for every let's say number w from the interval z squared over 2 z squared f of z equals f of w all right now notice that if for example if w were not to be this interval but if it were the whole set of real numbers that would mean that our function is constant because for every two arguments the value is the same but we cannot say it yet actually we'll show that our function is constant by extending mm, the part of the domain on which it is constant it is, it is known to be constant uh, in both direct directions to zero and to infinity because notice that there is a chance that these intervals for larger and larger z's they will extend to plus infinity and for smaller and smaller z's it will actually uh, extend to zero now we need to fill in the details first let's set let's set something something nice let's set x to be this arbitrary looking number three over square root of three over two in our condition i will mark this condition it's very important i will mark it maybe circle my my market circle in circle then we know the following that for every real number w from the interval which interval well 3 over 3 over 2 squared is 3 over 2 over 2 again it's 3 quarters and here i will have 3 over 2 i know that on this interval f of w equals f of square root of 3 over 2 and let's visualize it if i have my real line right here for example here i have one here i have three over two here i have three over two here i have three over four i have demonstrated that on this interval from there to there i have demonstrated that on this interval our function is constant yes it equals constantly f of this number f of this number and now i wish to extend this interval in both directions let's maybe start with uh, going to the left so for example here is 
uh, one half, one quarter, here is zero. Well, I will consider the following sequence of numbers. So consider, consider the following sequence of numbers. And also, sorry, I made a typo. It was not X, but Z. Actually, it was Z. So now consider the following sequence. Z0 equals 3 quarters. And nth number in our sequence is this, uh, this number. ZL minus 1 squared over 2. Or positive integers. It's pretty easy to see, it's very easy to see, in fact, that this sequence diver uh, converges to zero. It is easy to verify. It is easy to verify that the limit as n goes to infinity of Zn equals zero. And what does it mean? Well, that means that if I start with, it, with this number, I know that, maybe, maybe let's write it. I know, we know, that for every natural number, positive, positive integer uh, n, and for every w on the interval Zn squared over 2, for example, to 1, f of w equals f of 1, this constant value. How do I know that? Well, because on this interval our function is constant. If I have 3 over 4, then this condition circle extends the interval on which our function is constant to some bigger interval, for example, to something like that, then next application of our sequence extends this interval to something larger and larger. You get the idea. And this sequence of intervals go to the left to zero. So now we know that for every for every hmm, w from 0 to, to, to 1, or by now we know that f to 3 over 2, f of w equals f of 1. All right, so we have extended uh, the part of our domain on which our function is constant to the left. To, to the left. What about going to the right? Going further and further to the right. Well, to make my life easier, I will consider one auxiliary number. I have considered square root of 3 over 2, and now, now I need some space, so let's, let's do that. All right, so now set, set um, z to be 3 over 2 minus some epsilon or small positive number epsilon, and let's set it in what? Let's set it in our condition circle. Then we have the following circle, and also maybe let's mark this condition, two circles. And two circles. We get, we get the following that for every a real number w from 0, and now our interval is extended, uh, so I am taking 3 over 2 minus epsilon squared, 3 over 2 minus epsilon squared, our function equals f of 1, it's constant. All right, but notice that this number for small epsilon is definitely greater than 2. So in particular, for every, uh, for every w from the interval 0, 2, 
f of w equals f of 1. All right, and now I will consider the following sequence of numbers. Let's consider the following. Zn, first z0 equals 2, and Zn equals... Uh, equals, let's say, Zn minus 1 plus 1. Or natural numbers for positive integers. All right, notice, notice that mm, it is easy to verify. It is easy to verify. That this sequence obviously diverges to infinity. Is one thing, but the second thing, which I also wish to do, is to say that Zn is definitely, it is definitely uh, less than, less than Zn minus 1 squared. Why is that? Well, because here we have Zn minus 1 plus 1, here we are taking squares, and square function grows much faster. And we are starting with a big argument. You can verify it by induction if you do not believe, which allows us essentially to write that for every positive integer n and for every number w from the interval 0 to zn closed, f of w equals f of 1, but the sequence zn goes to infinity, which means that for every, every positive number w, f of w equals f of 1, which means that our function is constant, i.e. f going from the set of positive numbers into the set of real numbers is constant. It's constant. All right, and now let's do quick verification. Well, so going back to our drawing, I have uh, demonstrated first that, for example, my function is also constant on some interval of this kind. Here is number, where is 2? Two? 2 is, for example, there. I have demonstrated that it is constant on some interval like that. Then next step, it's constant on some interval like that, and like that, and it, it goes to infinity. It fills the entire real number line. And let's also go back and verify. Well, easy to see that, in fact, every constant function satisfies our functional equation. So our solution set consists of only of only, uh, only uh, constant functions. So these solutions, solutions, our solutions are functions, functions f of a set of positive and real numbers into its into the set of real numbers, which are constant. And that closes our problem. Very nice problem, I say. Somewhat unusual, but I enjoy it very much. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that you've learned something new, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.